You're listening to the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast, a place for sex addicts to share their experiences of recovery, to help break the stigma, myths, and misconceptions of sex addiction. This podcast may contain topics of sexuality, sexual trauma, dysfunction, or other things that may be triggering. So listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast. My name is Jason, I'm a sex addict, and I will be your podcast host for today. What's going on everyone? Welcome to episode 116 of the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast. And Happy New Year! Still recovering from the holidays, I am gradually making my way back to the podcast and answering emails, getting new recordings scheduled for the new year, and editing new episodes. And in this one, I'm excited to be sharing an experience, strength, and hope share that we recorded at the noon Zoom room back in December. This one will feature Ben V, and I've known Ben for a couple of years now. He joined the noon Zoom rooms back in the fall of 2020 and was actually part of our Extensions of Hope meeting, which was a weekly meeting that we set up for the year of 2021, working all 12 steps in one year. And I did make mention of this in my share at the end of Ben's recording. And uh, an apology to MJ, who also makes an appearance in this recording. Uh, Yes, MJ was not part of this group, so extending my apologies out to MJ. But uh, anyway, it was a wonderful group that we worked the 12 steps in a year, and we actually talked about that on episode 15 of the podcast, and that one is entitled Working the Steps with a Step Group. So back to this recent recording from the noon Zoom room, Ben started off with a reading from Voices of Recovery and read most of it, and I wanted to read the rest of it here at the beginning of this episode. He does mention that it was the reading for March 8th in Voices of Recovery, but looking it up, it was actually on March 11th of Voices of Recovery. So I'm going to read the March 11th reading, which can be found on page 71 of Voices of Recovery, and I'll read this in its entirety. And it starts off with a quote, We may have setbacks and difficult times. We may suffer the painful consequences of past behavior or experience the pain of new growth. It is important that we not give up. And that comes from Sex Addicts Anonymous, page 66. My life is like a giant wheel. The top of the wheel is in the light and fresh air. The bottom of the wheel is grinding through the mud. This wheel represents the ups and downs of life. And the way of life I learned in SAA is like a snorkel. When I'm on the muddy side of the wheel, when I'm stressed out and want to act out, I now have tools and people available to help me breathe as I slog through the mud onto the sunny side. Now, when I see an opportunity to act out, I can ask my higher power for help, call my sponsor, find another activity, or meditate on my recovery. No longer must I hold my breath and suffer through the bottom of the wheel, or worse, try to get back up and hide in my addiction. I've come to understand that the low points will happen. They are just a part of life. I also have discovered that sooner or later the wheel will again come around to the sunny side. And every time I go through a muddy patch and stay sober, the sunny side is a new experience of life. Today is the day where I am no longer bound to the chains of addiction. And the meditation at the end... With the tools of SAA, I can keep breathing through the difficult patches and come out on the other side. So Ben did read most of that during his share, but there are a few parts that were left out, and so I wanted to read the whole thing. And there you have it. And before I turn it over to that recording, I wanted to mention at the end of this episode, I will be talking about the upcoming Bay Area Retreat, which happens every March, and getting excited about the 2024 Retreat. I'll also be reading some emails and YouTube comments, things that I've been putting off for the past couple of episodes. We have gotten quite a bit of email and a few YouTube comments. One of them in particular was very in-depth, so I wanted to take the time and respond. 
and finally read that here on the podcast. And several of the emails that we've gotten have had some music suggestions for recovery-related music, and I will be playing those as I read the emails and a few other pieces of music as well. So stay tuned to that at the end of this episode. This was a short recording from the Noon Groups, and so there's a little bit more time to go into all of the emails and comments at the end of this one. So without further ado, I am now ready to turn it over to Ben V speaking at our noon Zoom room. Here it is. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Thank you, everybody. My name is Ben. I'm a sex addict. And um, before I begin, I want to start by saying that part of my share does involve um, a minor child, but... All the information that you hear today has been disclosed to law enforcement and was determined to not be illegal. Thank you. My journey into recovery and in my daily walk with my higher power resonates closely with the March 8th reading of Voices of Recovery. For everyone in the room, I'll read a bit of it now so we can all be on the same page. Uh, It starts, we may have setbacks and difficult times. We may suffer the painful consequences of past behavior or experience pain of new growth. It is important that we not give up. My life is like a giant wheel. The top of the wheel is the light and fresh air. The bottom of the wheel is grinding through mud. This wheel represents the ups and downs of life. And the way of life I've learned in SAA is like a snorkel. When I'm on the muddy side of the wheel, I now have tools and people available to help me breathe as I slog through the mud onto the sunny side. I can ask my higher power for help, call my sponsor, find another activity, or meditate on recovery. No longer must I hold my breath and suffer through the bottom of the wheel, or worse, try to back up and hide in my addiction. I have come to understand that the low points will happen, that they are just part of life. I have also discovered that sooner or later, the wheel will again come around to the sunny side, and that every time I go through a muddy patch and stay sober, the sunny side is a new experience of life. The more and more I thought about doing this share, and the more I sit with my thoughts and my higher power, the more this wheel analogy fits my recovery journey. On a macro level, the muddy side represents my addictive experiences before coming into the rooms of SAA. When I got into high school, I wanted to be a music teacher. I went through college, met my wife, and began teaching. Almost immediately after I got into college, I began acting out outside my relationships. I had a long-distance girlfriend at the time, and this continued into my relationship with my now wife, including a very serious relationship that almost broke she and I up in my senior year of college, and a what should have been D-Day affair with my coworker that was discovered in August of 2020. But alas, My higher power has given me a spouse that I do not deserve, and she has stuck with me through all of that and the actual D-Day, which was later that year. You see, my truly spiraling, pitiful, incomprehensible, muddy, and demoralizing behavior stems from my character defect of seeking external validation. This initially took the form of seeking validation from women outside of my marriage, but it unfortunately devolved into seeking it from a female student on social media. I crossed the boundaries of appropriate student-teacher communication in July of 2020, and this student reported this communication to the school in late August or early September, resulting in me being placed on administrative leave on September 10th, 2020. This was my true D-Day. I had no snorkel, no escape, and my dream job was over. Fortunately, my mom, who was a recovering alcoholic, had come into town that same weekend to watch our kids since our daycare was closed. She recommended I seek out a 12-step program for sex addiction. I found phone meetings on the 12th, 13th, and 14th, and found myself in this noon Zoom room on the 15th of September, and have been home ever since. Cue snorkel. So on a macro level, my experience is my mud. It's the step one, two, and three. Admitting I was powerless over my addictive sexual behavior and that my life had become unmanageable. I had to admit that I could not breathe on my own 
and that I needed a snorkel or a higher power and make a decision to turn my will over to the care of that higher power. Steps four, five, six, eight, and nine were my climb up to the sun or the left side of the wheel if you're a visual person. By doing a searching and fearless moral inventory, admitting the exact nature of my wrongs to God, myself, and another human being, and becoming entirely ready to have God remove all my defects of character, I was beginning to be ready to enjoy all of the promises of recovery, although some of them had already come true. To me, these embody the strength of my story. And on a macro level, steps 7, 10, 11, and 12 for me are the sunny steps, as they seem to involve me operating in recovery mode and in my assets rather than in my character defects. When I feel like I am really working my program, these become my hope. The reading also says, though, that the mud on the micro level can mean the pain of new growth or the consequences of past behavior. One of my dearest brothers in this room is famous to me for also saying that the promises never guarantee that we'll never have a bad day ever again. So I don't always get to stay on the top of the wheel, right? Damn it. The right side, or on the way back down, can be many, many things. It can be my addictive tendencies, my middle circle, my defensive character, a test from my higher power, bad luck, whatever. How I get down sometimes doesn't matter. The analogy that I use is if you run over a nail, it doesn't necessarily matter where or what road you took to run over it. It just kind of ticks me off that I have a flat tire now. See, on a micro level, my experience, strength, and hope are similar to the 12 traditions. Traditions 1, 2, and 3 center me with the group's common welfare. I keep coming back to this group and other groups like ours because of its unity, group conscience, and the sole requirements of the desire to stop addictive sexual behavior. These intertwining elements act as another snorkel for me as I become irritable, restless, and discontent. When I think, have I been to a meeting lately? I gain strength when I think of traditions four, five, six, and seven, because I know that I cannot do my recovery alone, but I can learn to take care of myself, be self-supporting, and carry the message to sex addicts who are suffering. And on traditions 8 through 12, I often leave meetings or close my Kindle readings and fellowship calls with hope. My brothers in recovery come from all walks of life, welcoming me and everyone in the room and practice anonymity and all of these principles I have come to cherish. This program has saved my marriage, my relationship with my kids, and in many ways, my life. And while I'm no longer a music teacher, and my life looks nothing like I thought it would when I was in high school. I can honestly say that in nearly every way, it looks better than I ever thought I ever could have imagined. And I owe that to my higher power, the 12 steps of SAA, the brothers in this room and who have been in this room, my sponsors past and present. And as I said before, my higher power. Thank you for allowing me to be of service today. Thank you, Ben. Really appreciate your experience, strength, and hope. The meeting is now open for discussion. While sharing, please refrain from crosstalk. Crosstalk is defined as giving advice, responding directly to a share, or addressing your comments to particular individuals. We use I or me language to avoid speaking on behalf of others. To avoid triggering others, we ask that you refrain from giving graphic details or naming specifics such as websites and acting out locations. Please be mindful and keep your shares to two minutes. And uh, we will begin with Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. I'm Jason, and I am a sex addict. And Ben, thank you so much for speaking here today and for allowing your voice to be used on the podcast I can remember when you came into the noon room and subsequently working the 12 steps in a year program that we did. And I am just amazed at where you started and where you are now. And I love your breakdown of the steps. So grateful to have you in these rooms. I just absolutely love that you are still part of this program. 
Uh, I know you disappeared for the noon room for a while due to your job and, and things, but so grateful that you're still showing up here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. MJ. Hey, uh, MJ, sex addict and uh, Ben, I'm, I was so glad to hear your share. I, I, uh, you know, we've been side by side in this thing for a long time, and I was glad to see you back in this meeting, though I respect any choice you make. And I just wanted to say, you know, when Kai gets older, I would happily hire you to be her music teacher in whatever capacity that means, you know. Or maybe you could just do it for free as an act of service, which you may owe me because I just realized that you and Jason did some kind of step work program in a year without me. And that really hurts, Ben. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jason, you're the one that hurt my feelings deeply. Okay, Ben, I love you. Uh, I'm mad at dad. You know, you're just my big brother. I'm not mad at anyone. Okay, I've, I've gone too far. Ben, I'm so happy. You really lifted a lot of people's spirits today. I'm always so happy to see you in this room. I think you're a great person, and I hope whatever negative voice is popping into your head late at night, uh, you can hear my me kicking. You know, I'm going to kick them. I'll kick their ass and say, you know, Ben's awesome. Uh, love you. Thank you, MJ. Brother David. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, Ben, that was a wonderful, wonderful share for us today. You know, I, I admire, you know, this journey that you've been in. And I have to say that when I first shared that I had lost my position because of something I said, you were one of the very first people to reach out to me with regard to that. It was a very painful time for me. I lost my way the rest of the way that brought me into this room. I do love exactly how you spoke to us from the heart today and how you shared about the steps and the traditions and what a beautiful way for us to understand, experience, strength, and hope and the growth through those steps and through those traditions. Thank you for being a blessing to all of us, Ben, and you are loved. Many thanks to Ben. I already made my comments there at the end of this recording, along with MJ and David, who have been on the podcast uh, several times each. So those are some recognizable voices. But yeah, Ben did mention that he was a music teacher. And I did ask him if he wanted to include any music here on this episode of the podcast. And he gave me a link to a piece of music that he was particularly fond of that he had arranged for teaching his students playing music. My kid has been in orchestra for a number of years and playing cello. And so I can really appreciate any music teacher willing to take on students to teach them the gifts of music. And this one in particular was special for Ben. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right. The piece is called Lyndon Lee, which is arranged for wind band. Such a beautiful piece of music. I'm so grateful, like I mentioned before, all of the music teachers out there teaching our kids how to play music. I think it is extremely important and very, very grateful for Ben sharing this here on the podcast. And I will be getting to some other music a little bit later after reading some emails. First, I wanted to talk about the upcoming retreat in March. This will be Again, here in the Bay Area, Northern California, March 15th through 17th, and I posted links 
on registration on the Bay Area SAA.org website for those interested here in the Bay Area of going. And on future episodes of the podcast, I'll be getting a little bit more into detail, but this is a three-day event just available for SAA members where we have lots of meetings, workshops, a number of outer circle activities, including ping pong, a campfire and a drum circle, the talent, no talent show, hiking in the beautiful mountains, and most importantly, having the fellowship of a bunch of other sex addicts is such an amazing weekend. And I look forward to it every year during the pandemic years. It was really difficult to be without it. We did have an online version of it, but it wasn't quite the same as being in person. So last year was our first one back since uh, 2019. And this year I'm excited for another retreat. So anyway, I will leave a link to the Bay Area website where you can find any other information about the retreat there. And before emails, I wanted to get to the YouTube comments. The first one came in uh, just a few weeks ago on episode 114, and this was Jim W. sharing at the SAA and COSA speaker meeting, and it says, thanks for posting these talks, and you're very welcome, and we will have another SAA and COSA speaker meeting coming up in February, and hopefully I'll be able to share those recordings on future episodes of the podcast, so look forward to that. The other YouTube comment that we got that I mentioned in December, and I wanted to talk about it, came from someone about a month ago, and this is on episode 13 of the podcast on YouTube, and the episode title was Isolation, Inclusion, Resentments, and Acceptance, and this was an episode where my friend Tim and I were talking about a number of things, including during that recording, I had just gotten my first vaccination and how I was feeling during the recording. And we got into a myriad of topics, including resentments over lots of different things and how to use our program to work through that. And with resentments, talking about acceptance around people who have different viewpoints than we did. We also, like the title mentions, talked about inclusion and diversity. And so with that being said, I want to get to the comment and then to my response. So the comment says SA, and I'm guessing that it is supposed to mean SAA instead of SA, but it says SA shouldn't be involved in politics or gender ideology or race issues. You should know that. We put principles over personalities. So here's the response that I had. Thanks so much for your concern. SAA does have committees on gender identity, including men's, women's, and LGBTQ, and also race, BIPOC, which is Black, Indigenous, and Persons of Color. And for further information, please read here at saa-recovery.org slash diversity. And there is a lot of information on how SAA is inclusive. And we do talk about gender. We do talk about race and inclusion and how these committees are there to help out with inclusion. And this is something that I did not put into the response, but on episode 45 of the podcast, called Personal Recovery Depends Upon SAA Unity, I did talk about Tradition 1 and the Exploring Inclusion and Diversity in SAA event. And this was something that was put on by the ISO and did cover a lot of different ways that we can be inclusive, including neurodiversity, intimacy and sexual avoidance, the Women's Outreach Committee, the LGBTQ community, BIPOC, Uh, sex workers that are in the program, breaking the chains for people who are going through the legal system, the Inclusion and Diversity Committee itself. And we also had a group from India talking about what it is like being in an SAA meeting in India. So we do talk about things like that. Back to my response. SAA is not involved in politics, nor did we talk about politics in this episode. 
We, as individuals, did discuss our personal resentments, some arising from politics, but we did not talk about politics itself. We have edited out actual political ideology from a few episodes of the podcast before and will continue to do so. However, in this episode, we were talking about our resentments, not politics. The quote read at the beginning of episode 13 comes from page 93 of Sex Addicts Anonymous on Tradition 10, and that states, The tenth tradition does not mean that as individuals we can't have or express opinions on outside issues. However, we take care when making any pronouncements on outside issues within the SAA meeting itself. And this podcast is not a meeting. Part of the response I did not include is there's another quote from the Green Book. Yeah, the bottom of page 93, it does say, Our experience has shown that it is best to keep these opinions to a minimum when sharing and to always identify them as personal opinions rather than the opinion of the group. So back to my response. Additionally, there is a disclaimer at the end of every episode. The views and opinions contained in the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast are those of the participants, and they do not necessarily reflect those of the Bay Area Intergroup or the ISO of SAA. There are several other episodes of the podcast that we've talked about Tradition 10, and what we've deemed okay for personal opinions and stating that they are personal opinions. Continuing, I hope this clarifies the points brought up. SAA does have committees dedicated to diversity and inclusion at the international level and the local level. The guests of the podcast do not represent SAA as a whole, but our personal stories and opinions. We definitely agree principles before personalities. Please let us know specifically on this episode or others if you feel further edits should be made. Thanks again for raising your concern. So again, there have been several episodes of the podcast where we've talked about Tradition 10, including the Tradition Study, where we do talk about stating our personal opinions as guests of the podcast versus making statements on behalf of SAA. So anyway, I did want to address that, and please, if you feel that we've gone over the line in any way, please email us at feedback at sexaddictsrecoverypod.com, and we'd be happy to get back to you. And if there are anything specifically, I can make further edits if necessary. And I did mention that we have edited out segments of people's conversations that did go over the line talking specifically about politics. So with that out of the way, (laughs) there are still a lot of emails to catch up on. And in the previous episode of the podcast, I did read a poem called It Waits. And this is from our listener who I have initialed as R. And he and I have had a couple of other emails back and forth and quite a few of them with some musical suggestions. So they're both at jason at sexaddictsrecoverypod.com and uh, the other one at the feedback email. So I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between those. But I did want to get to that on this episode. And the first one that I got, and this was from the middle of November, says, Hi, Jason. I've listened to a few of the step one shares and love hearing these stories of recovery. I've been in SAA since March of 22. I'm a porn addict specifically, but I know my secret addiction was getting more risky. I had an online affair with an old friend from Bible college. Long story, but I never saw myself as an addict until the shit really hit the fan. As a leader in churches, etc., I realized I really needed help. I'm thankful for sobriety in a group I can call any time. Music is huge for me. Bluegrass, country, metal, hardcore, etc., Tool and Iron Maiden and Travis Meadows, you name it. Check out Travis Meadows' album called Killing Uncle Buzzy. It's all journal entries as he walked through alcohol recovery. Amazing. It'll tear your heart out in a good way. Signed, R. And yes, I have listened to the entire album. And yeah, some of them (laughs) were pretty, pretty darn heavy. And I'll be playing a couple clips from Travis Meadows' music here shortly. But uh, next, I wanted to go to another email just after he had sent the poem. 
And it says, Travis Meadows blows me away. As a recovering alcoholic, he gets addiction. His song Sideways really kicks ass about recovery. And he also talks about the Uncle Buzzy album again in this. For me, a few artists I keep coming back to are Tool, Tom Petty, Iron Maiden, and Striper. Comeback Kid has a song, Surrender Control, that I really love. My music ranges from bluegrass to metal. Yeehaw! Signed R. And so, yeah, in this episode, I wanted to play a few tracks from Travis Meadows, and we'll probably get to some of the other songs that he mentioned on a future episode of the podcast. So this is the song called Sideways. If I could buy myself a conscience It wasn't broken Mend every fence I drove my heart head through Relock all the doors I wish I never opened Unlearn the things I wish I never knew And it came out through the bottom Came out through my fears Came out way too early I wish it never did Push it down, it comes out sideways Push it down, it comes out sideways Sideways, sideways. Yeah, I really love that one. And yeah, definitely about recovery. The thing I found interesting about this, and I needed to listen to this in context of the whole album, it has a musical outro that seems a little bit different than the rest of the song. So I'm kind of wondering if that's a transition into another song, but still very, very cool. The other one that I wanted to play from the album Killing Uncle Buzzy is a song called It Ain't Fun No More. And this is definitely about finding that point in life where the addiction has lost its fun and is become detrimental. And at the bottom, that breaking point of needing to say enough is enough and get into recovery. The reason I really highlighted this one is I just love the uh, the swampiness of the uh, guitar, and it's also a distorted acoustic guitar uh, with a slide, which sounds super, super awesome. So I really locked in to this music. But uh, anyway, here is Travis Meadows with It Ain't Fun No More. It ain't fun no more. Can't drink enough to get a good it down but I lose the war It ain't fun no more It ain't fun no more It ain't fun no more I rode that horse my ass is sore that shit ain't fun no Super cool. Yeah, I love that. And yeah, there are some some really deep ones on this album. A song called Let It Go, and it's not the one from Frozen. Another one called God Speaks. Another one called It Gets Better. The one that closed the album, Learning How to Live Alone. Woo! That one, uh, just so sad, but still with a lot of heart. So great album suggestion. Thanks, R, for that. And I will be playing Comeback Kids song on probably the next episode of the podcast. And we'll see if we can fit in some Tom Petty, Iron Maiden, or Striper. I haven't listened to Striper in a long time, but yeah. 
Here's one that came in in December. Hi, Jason. I'm interested in finding out more about being a guest on your sex addicts recovery podcast. Do you need any guests for 2024? I have six slash 12 years abstinence in SAA and have been in the program since 1990. Your brother in recovery signed J. And yes, I am starting to schedule new guests for recordings and I will be reaching out to you. We've had lots of requests that I'm continuing to answer uh, regarding episode 110 of the podcast, and that was with Chandler, and he had created an app. And because we do not promote other things, I did not mention the name of the app on the episode, but if you are interested, I can send you further information. But just wanted to maintain that the podcast is not here for promoting other things. Got a couple more music ones here. Really wanted to get to this one. And I did listen to the song mentioned in December. This one came in uh, December 19th. And it says, absolutely loving the podcast. Every one of them. I'm binging on them. We have some of the same music tastes. I like the throat singing. Avi Coplin chanting. And Toccata in D minor was played at our wedding. I love the deep powerful organ music, and the Mongolian band The Who, etc. I was listening to the pod on throat singing, and I believe that is episode number 98, and wondered if you had heard much didgeridoo music. Then three minutes later, you mentioned didgeridoo. Crazy. And parenthetically, on episode 54 of the podcast, which was listener emails and meditation music, I did play didgeridoo artist Stephen Kent. I have an album of his. And I have a few other CDs from didgeridoo artists in my collection. Back to the email. This came to mind just now, so I thought I'd send it to you. I have so much I could send you. It's a favorite of mine from long ago. And this is a song from an Australian band called Spy vs. Spy. My wife is from Australia, and she knew who they were. It's an awesome song, and it's called Sally Ann. And I will read a little bit here. Sally Ann's story is a sad one. Uh, She was an Australian writer, sex worker, and whistleblower who was the victim of a homicide. She came to attention in 1981 for speaking out about police corruption in Sydney, and her Murder remains unsolved. So anyway, I really love this one. It reminds me a lot of early U2, as well as some of the new wave bands that were on the Valley Girl soundtrack. This did come out in the early 80s, so it is of the same period. So this is Spy v. Spy with Sally Ann. Somehow find the path But feet get dirty on the way Disappointment Always rings its ugly head Expensive habits, expensive taste I love that. And thank you so much for sending that in. I had not heard Spy vs. Spy. They're also named V Spy, V Spy, or um, some people called them the Spies. And so, yeah, my wife was well aware of them and really glad that I got to hear this. And thank you so much for sending that in. And I think the last one that I'm going to share on music comes from a past guest of the podcast. We were hoping to share some music on the episode that he was on. And this is our past guest called Anonymous. 
He put, Hi Jason, below are several links to the album I made if you want to share them. Attached are two songs I think might be cool to play on the podcast. Let me know what you think. My buddy plays piano and I drum and rap. And so I have a couple of songs here and I wanted to play a little bit of that. And this first one is called Spore. This is my soul. My father is my celestial body. The whole inside my body. Nobody knows me like I know me. A release of dopamine. The fans begin to rain. Dream out, scream out. Your frustrations and gyrations vibrating. Earth shaking. Earthquake has got me breaking. Earth place of mind is vacant. Born vagrant. Forsaken. Impatient. A migrant on the migration. Train station. Earth shattering. Teeth clattering. Deep cavity. That's so awesome. Yeah, I love love that. And uh, I also wanted to play another track called Itch. But there's a divine rhyme and time and we're all blessed. Don't forget the message that we send. Reinvent, repent what God sent. God's gift, the rift in the system. Forgiven for our sins and blisters. Brothers, sisters, misses, and misters. Growing older, the weight of the world on our shoulders. Take this boulder and climb like Sisyphus. Die like Lazarus, reborn like Jesus. Believe us when we say that there's a spiritual, a ritual on the pulpit. Grab it and pull it, then roll it like a kingdom spitting that dumb shit till kingdom come bullet and gun germs still appeal and run build the drum tingle down your spine and shine with time single mind can find grace a new place super cool I, I just love the creativity that we have in the rooms here and i did want to keep the band's name anonymous along with our guest anonymous uh just to make sure that everything is on the up and up but uh, anyway, yeah, thank you so much. So there are a few other emails that we've gotten that I will save for the next episode of the podcast since we've been talking here a lot about some older emails and the YouTube comments that took up quite a bit of time. And I do want to finish up this episode so I can get it out in time for the three-day weekend here. But super grateful to finally be putting out a new episode of the podcast in 2024. There will be a lot of episodes on the horizon. I recorded another first step at the noon zoom room. And next week I'll be recording another experience, strength and hope share do have another Joe and Charlie episode to get to. Like I said, I am starting to schedule new guests for brand new interviews with me. So look forward to those and let's see what this new year brings. With that, I'll bring this episode to a close. So if you did want to email us, I am finally getting back to responding to everyone. Thank you for giving me some time during the holidays to step away from my role as producer of the podcast and answerer of emails. I'm still answering emails for the Bay Area Intergroup as well. So very busy, but grateful So if you wanted to provide feedback for the podcast, you can reach us at feedback at sexaddictsrecoverypod.com. Or if you wanted to get a hold of me personally, you can reach me at jason at sexaddictsrecoverypod.com. Like I said, I am super grateful for all the connections from people around the world looking to be guests on the podcast, and hopefully we can get you in very soon. So I thank you for tuning into this episode. And as always keep coming back. The views and opinions contained in the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the Bay Area Intergroup or the ISO of SAA. SAA.